Hello everyone, welcome to another video on painting watercolors. So this is the reference photo that we are going to use for today's painting. Let's see how it goes. First I start off with some broad washes using cobalt blue, turquoise and a bit of uh, burnt sienna. So this will work as the backdrop for our painting. It's a pretty pale wash and just manages to take the white off the paper. The wash gets much warmer when it reaches the foreground of the painting. I'm adding a bit of yellow ochre into the wash and making sure that it becomes much warmer. A bit more of yellow ochre. And a bit of burnt sienna as well. I take a tish, dry tissue and lift some paint off certain areas where the water is. This needs to be done fairly quickly before the wash dries. Next I take a bit of yellow ochre and paint it on top of the wet wash. As you can see I'm not getting any uh, strong edges, it's just merging with the background there. I'm using Daniel Smith yellow ochre. Uh, pretty much any yellow ochre would do for this thing. I try to leave a few white spaces as well. It is very important that this step is done as soon as the first wash is laid so that you don't get any hard edges on the paper. I add a bit of turquoise to the foreground just to cool things off to take the brightness off the yellow ochre. Next I take a bit of burnt sienna, burnt amber and a bit of turquoise and mix a dark color. I'm using a synthetic brush at the moment and trying to lay in a few crisp strokes there. I don't want the strokes to disperse at the moment, I want them to be a bit more prominent. But as you can see it didn't work that well. So I mix some more paint again with much lesser water and try it again. This time it's much better. It's very important to know from where the light source is and where the darks are. As you can see I'm trying to get some straight lines going in there. And the yellow ochre that we laid is still wet. So it's, it's kind of mixing with the yellow ochre and giving us a kind of a glow which is what I'm really after. It is very important that I do this fairly quickly 
so that the yellow ochre that we laid before doesn't dry. Now I mix a bit of sepia and a bit of uh, ultramarine blue to get a very dark mix. So this has to be tonally darker than the brown that we used before. Use the same dark brown and we'll add a few uh, bits and pieces at the background. Otherwise it's a pretty boring background that we have there. Just to denote a few seaweeds and rocks and stuff. I'll use my finger to give them an illusion of reflections over there. I'm gonna take the yellow ochre that I used before and just darken a few areas in the background because it's 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 reading a bit too pale for me at the moment. Yeah. So it's time to paint the figures. I'm using a pretty dark mix to paint the clothing on the first figure. Next I drop in the legs using burnt sienna and a bit of uh, lavender. I'll give the other person a nice blue t-shirt. I'm using Art Spectrum Tasman Blue. It's kind of an opaque blue. It's useful for uh, painting t-shirts and other small bits where you don't need to mix with any other color. As you can see, it's pretty opaque and reads quite well as a t-shirt. And I give him the legs and the arms and a pair of black shorts. Yep, 
the next step would be to make sure that the figures are well connected with the rest of the painting. The figure in the blue is already well connected with the darks surrounding him. Now I'll add some reflections to further connect him to the rest of the painting. I need to do the same for the other figure as well. It is imperative that the figures are connected well with the rest of the painting so that they read well together. And finally, I take a bit of lavender and add a few bits and pieces here and there just to break off the monotonous dark areas that I have painted before. I take a bit of white and again break the dark areas that I have painted before just to add a bit of interest. Now it's the time for my Swiss Army knife. <laughs> I use the knife to lift off a few areas of the painting to show some highlights. I feel the seaweed at the back is a bit too dark for my liking so I take some clean water and just make sure that it doesn't read as dark as it was before. So that's it. I thoroughly enjoyed painting this. This is actually my second attempt at this painting. I initially painted this on location. Yep, that looks much cleaner after the tape has been removed. See now is a plain air painting that I did on the same location a few months back. It's pretty much similar to what we did.